Hello, everybody. Welcome to the sound test room. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so today we are taking a look at the marvelous and newly updated sampler, 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 which is a, a multi-touch sampler and uh, one of the most loved iOS iPad apps ever. It's been around for a long, 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 long time. And it's 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 great fun. A long time ago, I did a a kind of tutorial. Well, it was a tutorial called the Epic Guide to Sampler. Still gets views now, believe it or not. So let's see who's here. Stephen, Stephen Rivers here. Size here. Walls here. Hi, Wall. Um, okay, so we're going to go through the whole thing again, um, step by step. You can do some incredibly good things here. Sampler allows you to load in six sample slots, or pretty much any samples you like. There may be a limit on the length, but it doesn't really matter. It's That's kind of not what it is. I find that working with shorter samples is better. The actual sample that's represented here at the moment is green one. That was recorded in with the audio input recording, so you can record audio in. However, I much prefer to uh, import samples in from L L Audio Share or Dropbox or whatever. Well, I have to export from Audio Share into Sampler, but I can import in to Sampler from Dropbox. So, uh, for a couple of secs, for a few couple of minutes, we're going to have a mess with this particular track. Then we'll start some blank ones and we'll look at some other projects and we will go through every single uh, icon, every single thing, what it does, how you use it. You'll have a great time. But just for starters, we'll just do this. And then I will explain how all this works.
<clears throat> so you can get into some serious, serious sonic madness. Yes, yes. Okay. Okay, let's go from the top. Let's turn the metronome off. That really comes in handy when you're recording. Okay, so this first one here, this S bing there, this is your master overall project management area. So this is where you would set something up and then save it or save it as another name. This is where you would load a project like that or create a new project. I've just created a new project by hitting new. There it is. It's blank. You can see there's nothing any in any of the slots. You can also load a project. So we've just been listening to Ice Station Radius. Let's load Joe's track, which only has one slot used. So this is the track that Joe made uh, the other day in uh, Group the Loop and uh, Cubases. So that slow ambient guitar thing. Okay, so if we hit this, let's look along the top now. The play controls from, let's see, these are your different playhead controls. So you can use any combination of these on any particular track. So you can have like this one tape unit on this sample. If we had another sample in this slot, we could use the sample player or we could use the tape unit again. You can't have more than one player per sample, but you have a choice of one, two, three, four, five, uh, six different or well, seven different ways to play your sample. So you have the actual sl slicer play. And then you have this, which is a bow. Uh, let's see. Oh, no, that, sorry, this is the looper. This will play the sample between any two points that you choose. And the higher you have your finger up the screen, the larger it will get. Like that. Then this is the bow. And this is the width of the bow. The, these controls change pair playhead. So this the particular thing on this bow. And this is the tape. This is brilliant. This is the one that's set up on this at the moment. So if I was to hold this and hit play, the tape would start to play. The tape's one of my favorite playheads. It's real good fun, but they all, they're all good. This is the arpeggiator. Um, you need to, we need to have it playing to, to experience the arpeggiator. So if we would hit play now, uh, why am I not playing? So... But because it's actually set up to be used with this, anyway, and then this one here just just plays your sample straightforward. So you could have six samples playing just like an ordinary DAW. That's your volume overall for per sample. That stops the sample from playing when it's in loop play mode. Okay, so, you know, get how that works. And then finally you have keyboard mode. Which plays the um, iPad. It, it sets up the sample to be played chromatically, but it always triggers from the beginning of the sample. But this is great if you've got one long note and it's a bass, it's a B or a C or something or whatever it is, or it's a drone. You can go into keyboard mode and you can, it's polyphonic, you can play play your chords as well. Anyway, then along the bottom, if we look at slicer mode here. You'll see that we can slice in 30 seconds, 16ths, 8ths, four, or not not at all. But, you know, like I said, this is set up to do something else. Now, you can also record pretty much any gesture, and you can also hold any gesture. 
this little infinite button here, this holds any gestures that you, I don't want to mess with this one because I want to play you with the, the tape version I've got going. But this actually holds the gesture that you hold down. And then you can do that up to three times and then you can record up to three different gestures as well. But you'll see when we, when we do it from scratch, you'll see. But this is the kind of cool stuff that you can create with just one sample and using uh, multi-touches here on the tape mode. So... Anytime you like, you can jump to any other mode. So let's remove the hold. <clears throat> so you can remove the hold and at any other time now we can just So after the center line it's reversed. The faster you go to the end, the quicker it gets. You can see your timeline is continually tracking if it's on play. So start it again. So to hold a gesture, you hit the infinite switch and it just holds for you and you can then move it around and it'll still hold. To remove a gesture, you just tap that. You can hold multiple gestures You can have up to three gesture holds. And then you remove them by tapping that little X. Another cool thing you can do is you can record. So if we put the metronome on, two, three, four, one, you can you can record sets of bars. You can just carry on recording. Um, so the first would be one bar. Let's record a couple of bars of this. So you just one, two, three, four. But you can record for ages and ages. Okay, so let's let's remove the recordings. On this one, the tape one, you can also use it as a scratcher. And of course your gestures will record or you can hold. Or you can record. So let me put me metronome on again. So stopping and starting the recording. Let's stop that solo. So one, two, three, four. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But if you do this,
what that does, what that, what this does, that's your scratcher. Once you engage this, it scratches but keeps the original pitch. And it ju it jumps to your That's pretty cool. So now what we can do is let's do something else that's really cool. Let's go to a blank sample. And this little file icon here, this relates to the pair samples. So this is where we can load in our, our own samples. There's some of mine there or you can load in some demo samples. But let's load in this kit where it says kit acoustic or kit electro actually. And let's stop this from playing. You've got this. So if we were to just play that, uh, let's switch it on. It'll just play through the what sits there like that's not a lot of fun. But if we go to the slicer. And then we hit record. So let's put our metronome on. We can record our own drum pattern in from, from if you've imported a whole kit. So in, in this we've got some. Some cool sounds and don't forget we've got three instances of recording that we can use. But if you're good with the old finger drumming, you know, you can you could do this much better than this is going to be. So let's engage recording. Right, I got the timing wrong. <clears throat> That's much better. Okay, so here, these are these are your effects per track. So if we, let's let's choose another what's it now. I don't really want to keep that because it's turned into a disaster. But let's take, for instance, is it this one? No, this one. This is global stop and start. This is individual stop. And this starts and stops 
your individual samples. So hold global start and stop. Hold individual start and stop. And that was a drum loop. Now you'll hear that there's tons of reverb on that. So this first one's our reverb. So you've got reverb, delay. You've got kind of a pit, like a pitch modulation type thing, which you'll hear better on actual sounds. Then you have a filter, and then you have a distortion, which is also quite nice for boosting quite quiet samples, like you've heard there. So on this particular one, let's play it. Because there's no kind of normalize. You do have, you do have like these position markers that you can play around with or add or take out and stuff like this like just by dragging up i don't use them very often but they're there if you want them so it's it's pretty cool um yeah let's see so we can remove that automation anytime we want and draw some new in So you can really get some really, you can get really, really creative. So this is the reverb. And this is in the slicer. Let's slow the timing down, you know, the resolution. And then we can also change, like this is just playing loop forward, but we can change how that, that's played. Now here's the thing, right? We've only got four slots there. We've only used four samples, so we can we can add some more stuff. You can do all sorts with it. You can do granular on it, Marcus. You can, like for instance, with this this one. If we go to our looper, anywhere we touch between two points. In fact, actually, we'll just we'll just hold it and then. Uh, 
I've got I've got it ping pong and see. So what's a so someone just said it, it will I be doing a new uh, thing of the layer when I finally understand how it works yeah. Do you know what multi-channel output? Pfft, don't know. Never use it. I'll, I'll I know. I know for a fact I'll never use it. I'll never. I'll. I'll probably do it. It's no. Jacob did a brilliant demo. Demo on a side chain. Personally, never use it. Don't like side chain and makes me feel sick. So unlikely that I'll be doing a side chain and video or anything like that. And highly unlikely ever in my musical life will I use multiple output. Uh, I know I demoed it the other night, but I wouldn't realistically use that. Uh, so I don't know. It's I don't. There's a lot of excitement around multiple outputs. I guarantee you, hardly anyone will ever use it. It's like sidechain, and hardly now we've got it. No one will want it. No one will use it. And but no one will say anymore. Hmm, you can't sidechain on the iPod because now you can, but not many people do. But that's just me. You know I'm old. We didn't have sidechain back in the day. You know, you like in the prog days. But great for dance music though, of course, obviously, and all the rest of it. But but for me, nah, not really. Uh, and multiple outputs. God, do you know what? Seriously, though, would you want to uh, spend three hours setting up multiple outputs on a synth just to apply a couple of different effects to different channels? I don't know. Maybe it's me. I'm not, you know what I mean? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, let's import another one. So let's select, select an empty slot. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's go to our... Our, our, our track management page here. Uh, let's go back here. So we've got some samples here. So some uh, samples. Let's put in some. I think uh, I'm not sure where we where we go in here. Let's go with this, which is a kind of a disco groove sample by the looks of it. And let's um, let's move that out of the way. Let's hit play. I might use a couple of Daniel. I've got some Daniels. I've just used some of Daniel's samples. going here now you can't for some strange reason the old sampler before the update you could you could import from audio shared as well but now you can only do dropbox import but not a not a problem you can Im you can import from audio share into sampler but there used to be a thing i don't know why that's not there anymore but we've got this running on background audio let's go to audio share and we've got some of um, we've got some of Daniels here, but we've got some from DJ Puzzle, which were free from iPadLoops.com. So you really ought to check them out as well. But they've got some uh, absolutely brilliant stuff. Uh, what's it in? So uh, let's see. I'm going to load this dubstep bass here. Actually, I'll load this one, I think. And I'm just going to open it up. Like this, I'm gonna go. I don't think it's there actually, so I'll go more and just go down to sampler, which is I think pretty close to the top somewhere. I think to copy to is it there? You go open in sampler and it should open in our slot here. Now that looks quite loud to me, so I'm gonna start quiet and start it off. And then I'm gonna there's a there's a way that you can set this to be the correct speed because this will be at 140 as we'll hear. Now I can't remember how you do it now. Is it there? You are. Mm. 
This one here it sets it at the speed. So let's let's get we can so you can see that if you want to be dead musical you can you could just import loops and let them loop but you could do that in anything can't you you can do that in Cubasis group the loop nano you can do just straightforward looping the fun comes when you start to experiment so basically at the moment this drum pattern this this here if we play This bass line. But what isn't it much more fun to Okay, so let's save that. Uh, let's just go to here and then we can go save as, and that started off as one called Seasons of Tiger. We'll just call this um, Dubby, 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 Thingy. Okay. Ding. There you go. And let's go with uh, another new project and let's load in some of Daniel's patches. So, like I said, you can easily go and grab your stuff from uh, Dropbox. Uh, but to get it from um, the thing, oh, you can and you can choose which, you know, slot you load it in. But we'll just start at the beginning. We might as well go back to here. And here is, let's go done. And let's go do, 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 Okay, so there's some here. Basically, there's some from Dean. Um, these are different, you know, they're different things we had. But we've got like some. Um, what's this? Check out those videos on the microfeed. Yes, yeah, so I've done quite a few microfeed videos, and there'll be more to come. Horror effects, for instance, we could go. I've got to watch my volume here because some of these are loud at point of. Um, origin sort of thing. So let's see. That's suitably suitably interesting. So let's let's do this, and we'll go. I, I wish sampler would appear there. This new file system, naff. And let's go open in. Where is it now? God, it's annoying. Is it here? Open, open in. Is it, is, it, is it gone? There you go. Open in sampler. And that'll put that in that first slot there. So let's go to the next slot here. Because if you leave it on that first slot, it will over. Oh, look. <laughs> that, you're just in time, Daniel. Just in time. Um, we're, we're just putting some of your samples into, into thingy. So what's this? Man falling. That'll do. We'll put that in. And 
Gosh, I, I wish, I do wish I'll open in sampler. That's super cool. So it is, we've got two now. Let's do three. And done. Let's go with the strange noise. Yeah, that's cool. And we'll do again more. And open in sampler. So we've got three of Daniel's samples in sampler. Now I'm going to watch the volumes on these. And at the moment, they're all going to play forward. So if we get out of the way, if we uh, hold this and hit play, I don't know why that's not playing. Interesting. Oh, wait a sec. I know why. Global star and then. So these are just. They're all going to play. In the right direction. But it's not. That's not really very interesting. So with this one, let's go to our... Let's stop that, actually. So this is the bow. I don't think it records your... It... No, it doesn't. So let's go to this one. Put an arpeggio on that one. Well, actually,
And then you can jump to other projects and stuff. limited by your imagination with sample art <laughs> which is still one of the most popular iOS apps <laughs> ever made ever uh, you, you go and look at the reviews the reviews are, uh, are amazing people absolutely adore this app I mean they really do it's much loved much 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 loved and it's great fun you know it's very entertaining it's you know, the ability to load six slots of samples and basically manipulate them any way you want with a, on a, with a touchscreen interface, which does not not need to go to any other page, which is not difficult to understand. With the arpeggiator, you get different arpeggiator types. It's simple. But you know what the beauty of this is? The, the actual... The, 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 the actual uh, help overlay here, it's, it's fantastic. You just go through and it, it just shows you and tells you exactly what it is. And that, this is it. It's a couple of pages. And then it goes through all, all the play modes. So, like, the sample of controls, you've got attack, release, um, your, your, basically your, your markers and your quantize in there for your, you know, stepping octave. You can go up, up an octave, up and down an octave. Then you can record. It explains what I've just explained. And then you've got your effects. And then you've got, like, it goes through, this is your play modes now, so your slicer, your looper, your bow, your uh, tape and scratch, uh, your arpeggiator, and your keyboard mode, and then basically you just play, your loop player, and it goes. But like I said, like I forgot, just the only, the only thing that you didn't point out was the plus and minuses with the thing. So we could go... Here's your samples. It's not that kind of sampler. Steven, it's it's more of a, a it's more of a performance tool than like a proper I'm gonna sample this and sort of uh, play piano on it kind of thing. It's a different type of thing. <clears throat> it's more about it's more your kind of entertainment center of sampling, if you like. Not like a not like a um like a proper sample kind of you know where you're sampling keys and stuff like that <coughs> anyway 
Guys, I'm going to go. Um, thank you very much for joining me for a look at Sampler again. Um, I I hope, remember there's a free MC. Yes, there is. A f uh, packs available for patrons if you're a patron for some of Daniel's stuff. And very good it is too. We like we like Le Production Zevon. Anyway, I'm going to go and chill me bananas. Or is it me beans? I'm not sure, but it's been chilled today. Uh, bless you all very, very much for watching. It, I, it is a fun app. And I don't know, I, before the update, I hadn't actually used it for ages and ages. And then to remember what it all did, I started to watch my video. And as soon as I started watching, I thought, oh, yeah, oh, it's dead easy. They actually died. Just go and have a look in there. And, you know, five minutes through that, and you know, right, that's how it works. Good idea is to start simple with um, just one... Uh, like for instance, one slot. If we go projects again, and now what we did with Joe's track, which was basically just a one slotted sample, and then just play around with that sound to um, just see what you can get. Put some. I put some reverb on this. Put more on. The filter. And that was Wall's CBG as well. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Right, yo, folks. Uh, I'll see you all later. I'll give you a minute to say ta to each other. Thank you very much for joining me this evening. I will see you all very, very, very soon.